Et voici Jeanne Vaubernier, dit l'ange. I don't know about you, but me, these French movies always make me a bit like, oh, you know, when you try to portray the 18th century, I don't know why, but they always look extremely weird, out of touch, and it's maybe what it was really like. But there's something very, like, Frenchy when I start watching that trailer. <laughs> the reaction to the Jeanne du Barry movie trailer. So Jeanne du Barry is um, a movie that stars obviously Johnny Depp, it's his big comeback and may win. And I have to say that I have, I'm quite pleased that we're doing a movie on Jeanne du Barry. In this reaction as well, I'm gonna talk a bit about the real Jeanne du Barry because I think this is a controversial figure but it's also a very interesting one. She's a woman ahead of her time, she's a woman full of passion, of love, she's a free spirit and we don't have that many women that are recorded in history that acted the way she did. And obviously her rise at court it with the 15th of France has to be, you know, kind of commended. At the same time, we'll discuss also her difficult and tragic end because we know that powerful women or women who want to follow their dreams often have, unfortunately, tragic ends. Un ange tombé du ciel. Je vous attendais, moi. So the trailer really starts with Jeanne Bécu, hein? Jeanne Vaubernier, Jeanne Dubarry. But here it's set up, right? She, she's already, there's a contrast. You can see her, you know, her white top, her uh, color, black color. Her hair is not the style of um, the 18th century. You can see in the background, you know, the man so serious. Um, you know, so we really have, we set up the movie is set up around her. She is carrying with Johnny Depp in many ways the movie. I have lots of things to say about Johnny Depp as with the 15th, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> so let's just continue here. But here we have um we have a woman that looks really modern for an 18th century movie. So that is quite interesting in itself. <laughs> All right, she's on the table, <laughs> she's crawling. So here again, a very modern version of Madame du Barry. I don't know, you know, sometimes I feel like maybe, yes, yeah, she would have done that. Who knows? <laughs> I wasn't there, you weren't either. <laughs> but that's beyond the point. But what's really interesting, that like, obviously she's crawling on the table. You can almost see one of the Spice Girls doing that. You see what I mean? Like, sorry if you're not my generation. <laughs> But you know, like it's really interesting to see how they're trying to portray a woman, a free spirit. It annoys me in many ways because we want to portray her as a frivolous woman uh, who had, you know, a, no taboo in terms of sexuality. We have somehow to make her look a bit stupid. Uh, do you see what I mean? Like a bit too much. And we have. To remember, Jeanne du Barry, the real Jeanne du Barry, was actually a very smart woman. I mean, don't get me wrong, yes, she had like, you know, a, an open mind about sexuality. We probably got her where she was, in with a 15 inch bed. Uh, but also, it, what's interesting is that she was a woman who was also very intelligent right like we'll see we'll discuss that in the second part of that video but she's someone who is politically astute and you can see that when she received people uh, in her castle later on um, when she leaves court uh, when with a 15 die so um, like here yeah I think it's a bit like oh is it really how we want to remember her how we want to remember a woman a free spirit a strong woman I don't know Ne pensez-vous pas qu'il serait temps de changer de vie Pour aller où Jean Dubarry veut que je vous présente au roi. So here Jean Dubarry, c'est Jean-Baptiste hein, Dubarry, who uh, is going to want to have um, Jeanne as a mistress of Louis XV to get himself all the benefits 
of um, having a woman under his protection in the bed of the king. So to do so, he's married himself. So to do so, he's going to marry her to his brother, Guillaume. What's so funny, it's so interesting. It's like Guillaume. So it's, it's a mariage blanc, right? It, it's obviously all fake. And uh, they're really like honestly trading Jeanne. Jeanne is just a piece of meat that they're putting in the king's bed. Uh, I found it quite like, you know, when they said it's time to change um, your life. It's done to, and she's like, to go where? To do what? But through this relationship with the king, she is going to spread her wings in many ways. I like that this woman, you know, is just following her heart, her passion. She has many lovers, but she learns, she learned from them. She really did. She learned that she get herself a, a better understanding of the society, of the noble society, a, a better education, a better understanding of how things worked. And obviously it's going to create friction because this woman comes from nowhere and she is getting so much attention from the king, also so much wealth. And that is something that noble people really didn't like. You know, they don't really like to share, <laughs> you know, their wealth with people who are low from lower ranks. So here it's quite interesting. Uh, but Jean-Baptiste du Barry is basically a pimp here. And Guillaume, his brother, has no interest whatsoever in Jeanne. He is going to do it. And as soon as he's married, he just <laughs> leaves her <laughs> to do whatever she has to do. And that's it. Do you see what I mean? So... Again, so that's Jean du Barry, Jean Baptiste du Barry. La Comtesse Jeanne du Barry. Yeah, because you couldn't be a mistress of the king without a title, so she becomes Countess du Barry. And here it's not her. Do you see? What I mean that 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 portrayal of her when you compare with you know the the, the first few um, sequences that we have of her, like frivolous, happy, wearing clothes that are you know maybe not always accepted so here she's gonna meet the king and it's a very interesting scene and it's also where I'm gonna discuss Johnny Depp's performance surtout ne regardez pas le roi dans les yeux ce serait perçu par la cour comme une invitation une invitation à quoi à la baguette taille the smirk <laughs> it makes me so uncomfortable like I'm just like I, I don't know if if Johnny Depp was the right actor I mean he's a great actor uh, I don't know him as a person I'm not gonna go down that route um but gosh just the vibe of it makes me you know like uh, I really don't I really don't like this and and her like being that you know upfront well, yes, I would say that would match probably the real woman. Um, you know, how are you going to get the attention of the king if you're not going to be a bit bold? And, you know, especially if you're not a real noble woman. So, okay. But obviously it's also her beauty. And it, I think it's also going to be... There's a passion between them. But I, I think that was, we tend to forget that Jean Paris also had a, a great intellect. Uh, Louis XV was not someone just stupid. Here, the, 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 the king and the way he's portrayed is very controversial in many ways. Um, and I, I just don't think that it's a good representation of Louis XV. Um, I mean, maybe you have other ideas I want to hear from you. It's just not my perception of, you know, the research I might have done myself or the research I've read from other historians. So... Yeah, so this is something where I'm just like not sure that he was the the right actor for this part. And also, he doesn't really speak French, so he's not speaking that much. And, you know, that's, that's a bit disappointing. Here again, we have a scene where she kisses him and obviously um, she's herself again. And I think that's why he also loved her because she was truly herself. Père, nous sommes devenus la risée de Versailles à cause de vos égarements. Le Premier ministre ne va pas tolérer que vous laissiez une fille des rues côtoyer votre entourage. Cette jeune femme est mon entourage. Here it's quite well done because his family really didn't approve of um, 
Madame du Barry, Jeanne du Barry. To be fair, not a lot of people approved of her. I liked his answers, you know, like, what about your entourage? I said, she is my entourage. But here again, we have the theme of a toxic passion as well, like where the man is completely drawn to that woman um, and she's kind of taking control until we realize that not really. Like, you can't take control of a man that is so powerful. I has always known that he was the you know the greatest the, this and that you know we're talking about absolute power here in France the portrayal of Louis the Fifteenth works well in many ways I mean I'm not criticizing the acting because obviously Johnny Depp is a great actor I'm just not sure he was the right fit for um, the role very interesting dynamic there's obviously a dynamic though I'm not quite sure and it's just from the trailer I can see why he would like her um, I'm not sure why she would like him. Le roi a d'autres maîtresses. Tu es en train de découvrir le côté sombre du roi. Then the, Jeanne du Barry is realizing that obviously she's not the only mistress. But here we're talking about the dark side of the king. Um, le côté sombre du roi. Well, all kings had all the mistresses, right? I mean, does it really make like you know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying like, does it make someone very having a dark side when it was like something completely accepted? I mean, everywhere. Um, I don't know. I find it a bit. Not sure what they mean here. Vous êtes sans danger, madame. So that last line, you're in danger, madame. Vous êtes en danger, madame. Um, I will see her running. I don't know if they, if the movie is just about the relationship with the 15th or what happens next. And I hope it's also what happens next because when Louis the 15th died, her life is going to become uh, more in danger in many ways. Now, what's very interesting about Jeanne du Barry, Jeanne Bécu, uh, story is obviously her rise at court, the fact that she's so close to the king. She's going to be raised as maîtresse en titre, so like, the, you know, the most important mistress of Louis the 15th at the end of his reign. I mean, it's something quite amazing to achieve. And obviously, you know, it's quite of a hard um, life she had. She's the legitimate daughter of Anne Bécu, a 30-year-old seamstress. She's again so ahead of her time. And people were realizing that um, Madame du Barry, Jeanne du Barry, was becoming very close to the king. There were lots of pamphlets uh, trying to make fun of her, her background, who she came from. It was very abusive and very insulting in many ways. Again, honestly, I think she just rose above it because she knew who she was. I think she really, truly knew where she came from and she had nothing to be ashamed of. She was given apartments at Versailles itself. So we had a true rivalry here between Madame du Barry and Marie Antoinette. And that's very interesting because obviously when Louis XV is going to die, as I said, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette are going to ask Jeanne du Barry to leave court. But then obviously there's going to be the French Revolution. And with the French Revolution, Madame du Barry is actually going to side with the revolutionaries. I think she's just interested in She's not afraid of criticizing the society. She's not, you know, she's not a true noble woman. What I'm saying by that, she's not, it's not by birth. So yeah, she acquired wealth. Um, she had a, a very lavishing lifestyle when she was the mistress of Louis XV and probably after. But I think she remembered a background where she was from. And she understood where the revolution, the ideas of the revolution came from. She's going to be executed in 1793, mostly because she's going to be accused of actually having too many connections, you know, um, in England and in other parts of Europe with noble people. And there's like rumors that she was against the revolution, that she was against their best interest. The 8th December 1793, Madame du Barry was beheaded by the guillotine on the Place de la Révolution. Her last word were, one more moment, Mr. Executioner, I beg you. Uh, she was later bur buried in the Madeleine Cemetery with many other victims, including Louis the 16th and Marie Antoinette, her biggest rival. She had been accused of m smuggling jewels uh, out of France to England. And that's where there was like this reputation like of her having ties with noble people all around Europe. And obviously it meant that maybe she could not be trusted 
basically in many ways her wealth and her connections created her end. For this movie on Jeanne du Barry, I hope they cover until the end. I hope they make her a bit more intellectual, a bit more sassy than just this very frivolous, you know, uh, open-minded uh, and uh, open with sexuality woman that they're portraying in that trailer. I hope there's more to it. I cannot wait for Netflix to release the date of when we're going to be able to watch Jeanne du Barry. I hope you enjoyed this little reaction and I'll see you next time. Bye!